right, guys, we're starting. Let's go. All right, now, I've got the um, motors running, meters running. Okay, now, this is our last introductory video on the periodic table, I think. I will reserve the uh, right to make additional ones on the periodic table. So now, what I want to finish with is something that is oftentimes overlooked in introductory chemistry courses, and that is uh, the inner transition elements, also known as rare earth metals. Uh, rare earth metals. And why are they called rare? Why would they, are they rare or are they rarely seen? I mean, what's the story? Anybody? Yes, senor. Excuse me, that, say that again. I, th I think you just simply answered the question, took the air out of the tires, finished the entire discussion in that one sentence. Carry on. What is that sentence again? Say it loudly. They are rare because they're very difficult to separate. From each other. Yeah, they're rare because they're very difficult to separate. They're very difficult to separate from their ore. They're very difficult to separate them. They're very abundant. Well, let's not, let's not go crazy. Let's not say very abundant, but they're abundant. And they're very difficult to harvest, to, to mine, to separate, to find, really. <clears throat> but they're, they're there. Anybody else want to add to that? Yes. Victoria, or that's just a, no, just a scratch? OK, that's not a problem. Scratching is important. Yes, anybody? Do you have, do you have any uh, applications of uh, rare earth metals or the inner transition elements? Yes, Victoria. For construction, like iron and steel, for electrical wiring. Say that again. I didn't hear you. Okay. Elements like iron and steel for construction. Those are not rare earth metals. Oh, sorry. That's okay. That's not a problem. That's not a problem. Not a problem. Yes. Uh, fat man. We call him Fat Man today. We're dressing up for Halloween. He has a fat suit on. He's anything but fat, but I enjoy calling somebody fat man. I like that. Yes, Will. Uh, fat man. They're used, 45% uh, of them are used. He's reading from text, which is really boring. I am. Yes, he is. But say that again. I, I'm ignoring you purposely because you look weird. But carry on. They're mostly used in converters, also in petroleum refining catalysts and magnets and other kinds. They're used in magnets? Yeah, they're using magnets. Petroleum. Refining, refining catalysts. catalysts. Yeah. I like that. Petroleum refining catalysts. What else? Uh, so converters. Converters. What does that mean, converters? Uh, what are they converting? Yeah. Are they converting a fat man into a skinny man? What do, what do you mean converters? Converting what to what? It's just, yes. it's just catalytic converters. What is it? C-A-T-A-L-Y-T-I-C. Catalytic converters. Yeah, catalytic. Okay, catalytic converters. Yes. Right. And where are catalytic converters usually found? That where's the, what's the common application of a catalytic converter? It's a three-letter word that you are very familiar with, I hope. <clears throat> Who said that? Car, car, C-A-R. Yes, exactly. Cars. They have catalytic converters. And what are catalytic converters in cars used for in just very general terms? What are they used for? What did you say? It's, it's to make the car move? The no. Of the Excuse me? It's in the exhaust system. Yeah, it's, a, it's part of the exhaust system. So why would it be in the exhaust system? That's a dead giveaway. To convert polluting gases into less harmful ones. To convert polluting gases, such as carbon monoxide, into less polluting gases. But they're still polluting gases. Well, if they convert it to carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is still considered a polluting gas, but it's different kind of pollution. Yeah. Yes. Um, aren't they used in like nuclear reactors? Nuclear are they are they used in nuclear reactors? Rare earth metals? Absolutely. What are two that are used in nuclear reactors that you can put your finger on right away? Like, like, your right away. Yes. I know one of them. Uranium. Uranium. Now, what isotope of uranium? What do you think? most unstable one, which is like, it's... The most unstable one? I like that, fat man. 238, right? 235. 235. 238 is the, is the more common one. All right. And you've got to separate out. 
But what's the what's a, what's a biggie? What's another one? Sounds like a planet or a demoted planet. Yes, Kaylee, who does not look like Kaylee today because she's dressed like a normal person. I like that. Your character today is a normal teenage person. Carry on. What is it? What is it? Yeah, that South African accent is really hard, especially when I'm deaf, because everything sounds like Puff the Magic Dragon. Um, That's a good uh, comedian. He's a funny comedian. Who is? There's a comedian named Puff the Magic Dragon. He's in like a he's in a he's in a dragon costume and it's really really funny. There's a comedian with the name Puff the Magic Dragon. Yeah. I'm talking about the song, but anyway. Um, what did you say? Plutonium. 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 Oh, okay. Well, so okay. You so you were pronouncing it differently than I'm used to. Anyway, plutonium. That's fine. Puff the Magic Dragon. All right. I don't want to see. It's so funny. Okay, so plutonium is another one. That's a that's a very toxic plutonium, extremely toxic. You know, when you build, I think they, isn't the UAE going to build nuclear reactors? Didn't I hear that? The UAE. Yeah. I'm just going to give you. One, I'm going to make. I'm going to ask one question. Okay. Okay. It's, it's cheap fuel, in in a sense. It's it's not. It doesn't produce carbon dioxide, and I can hold in my hand. I can hold in this hand, you know, like this, enough, enough nuclear material, enough uranium, enough radioactive material that could fill, gosh, a hundred train cars full of coal. I mean, it's amazingly inexpensive. The problem is it's very expensive because of safety. You want safety, right? Can you spell Chernobyl? And then this is the question. I'm not drawing any conclusion. What are you going to do with the spent fuel? Where are you going to put it? The United States, France, other countries, I mean, where, where, where are you going to put it all? Where are you going to put it? And you know how long it's going to be around? <laughs> Billions of years. It'll be around longer than the universe has been around. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. I mean, the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. That's the latest measure. So, I mean, where are you, you going to put it? Where are you going to put it? Shoot it in outer space? Oh, that makes sense. What happens if the spaceship blows up before it gets out of the atmosphere? I mean, gosh. I mean, it's weird. So, whatever. I, I did give a conclusion. My apologies. But the question is where, you know, use the nuclear energy. It's fine. I have no problem with doing that. However, even in best case scenario, where are you going to put the material that's left over? Space. No, it, okay. Well, like, can't they just, like... No, you can't put it in space. I mean, that would just be, you know, do you ever hear of the Challenger disaster where the space shuttle blew up? Yeah. Wasn't it the Challenger in 1986? Yes. Wasn't that the Challenger? Yeah. I was living in Spain at the time, and I was horrified. And on the news, it was on the news for like three minutes. I was in the bath, and uh, I heard about it. People were shouting in the living room, and I went out, wrapped the towel around myself, and went out, and the story was over. I never saw it until... Like two years later, I went home and I saw a special on television. But anyway, terrible. So what happens if you have that? What happens? Yeah. So anyway, what else? Rare earths. Anything else? Yes. Uses? Uses, yes. Applications. The, How he's hard at work here. I like this. They, they he's dressed like a butcher, by the way. I like that. Not a butcher. Oh, he's a doctor. I'm a mad scientist. You're a mad Dr. scientist. Pepper. Get it? He has a doctor pepper. Yeah, it looks like a, it looks like I'm, I want to, you know, order a half a pound of bologna from him. Okay, so what is it? What did you say? All the deflect ultraviolet uh, rays, and they're commonly used in sunglasses. Which ones? They're commonly used in sunglasses? Yes. Rare earth metals are commonly used in sunglasses because they absorb ultraviolet radiation? They is that true? Ultraviolet rays. Excuse me? They deflect ultraviolet They deflect ultraviolet radiation. Okay, which ones? Uh, and I've never heard that before. Uh, 
Assyrium, Diodesimium, and Samarium. Samarium. Okay. Samarium. Excellent. Really weird. Could we have a could we have I, I, I certainly trust you absolutely. Could we have a verif that's fine. You want to always verify things, you know. Could we have a verification on the application of rare earths or inner transition elements in sunglasses? Okay, just doing a back check here, okay? I, I like that. It's really good, actually. I'm very impressed. It's, I, know, I heard of everything everybody's saying, but that one's good. Doctor, Ooh. professor. Yeah. Doctor, doctor, professor. Mad scientist, excellent. I apologize for the baloney crack after that was a wonderful answer. Okay, anybody else? Okay, so while, you, while some people, can we do this back row here, looking up the sunglass thing here? And then I'm going to talk to these two rows. We just have a little bit more to do. I want to know about um, the elemental analysis of superconductors and semiconductors. Shall we start with semiconductors first? Anybody? Red, what do you think? Anything on that? Anything on semiconductors or superconductors for that matter? And what is, anything you want to say, Red? Grave silence. She's looking at me like grave silence. <clears throat> Very serious. What would you like to say? Nothing? You don't want to say anything? That's fine. Well, I apologize. Not a problem. She's continuing to look up. She's very serious this morning. Anybody else? No? Nobody? First two rows? You didn't get much past the... Anybody in the back? Yes. Yes. I found the sunglass. You found the sunglass thing. Let's have it. You got the sunglass thing? Excellent. Chad, you first. This is Gabby. She's wonderful. She's also dressed like a normal person. Yes, how may, how may I help you? It just says that because the inner transition metals are composed of series of lanthanide and actinide. Lanthanide and actinide. The lanthanide and actinide series are these. Yeah. Okay, see how, see, see, lanthanide series. So this is lanthanide right here. That's actinide, right? Now, the way this chart is set up, there should be 14 down here, but there's 15. But these two, this is the way I do it. It's arguable, but that's okay. But we're going to agree on this. These are D. This is, this is 5D1 and that's 6D1. Those belong here, okay? Yes, you get that? Yeah. They're just trying to make things clear. They're using a technique just to make things clearer. But to me, they muddy the waters. There's 14 down here, and those are blank, but these should be... The lanthanum and the actinide are down here, as they should be, and the lutetium and lawrencium should be up here. And you said, what did you say now? Well, say that again. I said that because the inner transition metals. Because the inner transition metals. <clears throat> I'll simply repeat what you're saying. Okay. They are composed of the series. Of they compose of the lanthanide and actinide series. Yeah, and because they fill up the F orbitals. They fill up the F orbitals. And there's something about the filling of the F orbitals that deflects ultraviolet radiation. Well, it just says that's strong enough that they're used for different purposes. They're used for different purposes. Like lasers. Lasers. Purposes. What else? But why are they in sunglasses? I don't think we, I'm not, I'm not satisfied yet. Had he said that they, yeah. had he said they deflect, is that, is that, do we have a verification on that? That those particular elements actually deflect ultraviolet radiation? And, the, and those, are in, those are in sunglasses? Not polarized sunglasses, any sunglasses. Now, are they in special Ray-Ban, fancy $200 sunglasses, or are they in everyday $10, you know, 100 derms kind of sunglasses? What are they in? Yes. Yes. Okay, to what? I call him fish man. I like it. He's tough. They compliment. Tinted sunglasses. Tinted sunglasses. Well, hopefully, sunglasses are tinted. What does that mean, tinted? It's so I weird they they I mean, can you? Are you wearing sunglasses? No. Will? I'm wearing glasses. Yeah, but they're yeah, but they're not tinted. But are there not tinted sunglasses? I think. I'm being silly. Are there ones that are clear? I, I've never seen. I mean. Oh, I thought they were clear. Anyway, anyway, carry on. Any, do we have anything else? Just simply deflex. Is that all you got, Gabby? Uh, let me find. Any, Antoine. Found the exact same thing. Okay, excellent. Anything, anything else for the rare earths? No? 
Okay. Anybody ever, what's that magnet? Neo something magnets? Anybody know about that? Look up that element. Neodymium. Look up that element there. ND. Look up that element and tell me about properties and uses. Look up that element. Neodymium. Okay. Can we take a shot of uh, the fat man here? Would you come up here and be on YouTube for the world to see? Is that okay? Uh, this is the fat man. Wait a second. Let's put the fat man on here. We're putting the fat man on. Okay. All right. Let's see. Fat man. Hi, Alec. How are you? Here's the fat man. Okay. Here's the fat man. Okay. Hi, Mom. Yeah, that's the fat man saying hi to Mom. Exactly. Proud of me, Mom. Yeah. All right, that's enough, fat man. Okay, very good. That was the fat man. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, this is not, the occasion is not Halloween. The occasion is dressing up as special character day. Okay, very good. All right, yes? Professor Salmon. Yes, I found some uses for it. You found some uses on neodymium? ND. ND. Go ahead, what is it? Uh... This alloy is used in such products. This alloy, it's not an alloy, it's an element. This element is used. Does in it say alloy? Yes. Oh, it does, okay. It's used in such products as cigarette lighters or a light flint. Or cigarette a light lighters? Flint operates. Yes, cigarette go ahead. Lighters. I found an infrared radiation filling. Infrared radiation. And then coloring glass. Coloring glass. And ceramics. Ceramics. Okay. All right. Alright. Anything else good? Using goggles. Using goggles, which are used for glass blowing. Okay. Nothing else? Nothing else? Is that it? What is it? ND. Yeah, ND. Anything? What'd you say? I can't hear you. For lenses? What'd she say? Fertilizers. <laughs> Fertilizers, yes, your teacher is deaf. Okay, yes, Alec. They're using headphones, microphones, and computer discs. Headphones, microphones, and computer discs. Yes. Okay, anything else? Batteries. Batteries. I like the way you said that. Batteries. Batteries. I like that. Batteries. Makes it sound like you're going to war. Batteries. Okay. All right, I like that. I like that. Getting ready for battle. Batteries. I like that. Anything else? It said it's added to glass to do a lot of stuff. Is added to what? To glass to make a lot of stuff. It's added to glass to make a lot of stuff. Yeah. Make a lot of stuff. Excellent. That comes from one of the top students in the 10th grade. To make a lot of stuff. All right. We like that, though. We like that. Excellent. She's dressed like a normal student. And she's talking like a normal person. I like that. I like that a lot. Excuse me? She's Cat Miss Everdeen. She's what? Cat Miss Everdeen. Hunger Games. I, I have no idea what you're saying. Are you saying a name? Are you saying an animal? What are you saying? It's a movie. It's a movie? Okay. What is the. I, I've heard of the movie, I think. Yeah, it's a book, too. A book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's the name she's saying? One person, excuse me. Katniss Everdeen. Katniss Everdeen? Yes. That's a name? Yes. God, it sounds like some kind of like disease of some sort. Some kind of special bone cancer. Sounds awful. God, Katniss Everdeen? Sounds terrible. It sounds like, you know, or the medicine or some kind of chemo. Katniss Everdeen? That's a name? That's her name. Excellent. Okay. I don't know. It's called Peter Millard? Pita, 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 Pita Millard. Okay. All right. Anyway. So, all right, so, well, I have somebody dressed like a turtle, so I guess we'll take <laughs> Katniss Everdeen as a real person. Okay, so, uh, what about the semiconductors? Oh. Everybody's a little goofy today in class. I wonder why. I know. It's all fat man's fault. Okay, so, so, what about the semiconductors and superconductors, the elemental analysis of those two things? What elements are in them? Silence. Silent. Excuse me? They're all metals? 
They're all metals. They're all metals. I like the way she talks. All metals. Excuse me? Oh, this is Red talking now. I like this. Excellent. She's arrived. I like it. Carry on, Red. They're in the fourth column. What does that mean? That's what it says? Excellent. Like this here? Or this over here? This over here? No, fourth column would be the one that you did the first one because it's one, two, three, four from the last. So hafnium, zirconium, titanium? No. Fourth column, so it might be like this. Here? Down here? All right, could we, could we please, like, look up elemental analysis of superconductors and semiconductors? Yes. So Did you look anything up? Yeah. I thought you were looking up before. What do you got? In uh, no oxycarbonate superconductor. Oxycarbonate, okay. It's so carbon, oxygen, carry, carry on. It's conducted using transmission electron microscope electron energy. Okay. Spectroscopy. With spectroscopy, okay. So it's used in spectroscopy, some kind of elemental analysis. I don't want to look up how en elemental analysis is. I want to look up what's the composition. C, U, N, C. Copper? It says C, U, and then N, and C, then SR2, calcium, copper, 2, O, Y. 2, O, Y. Okay, yes. Uh, it says that uh, silicon and germanium. Silicon, okay, good. Silicon is here. Look where silicon is. See that? You see where silicon is? Germanium is right here. Yeah? So these are, so they're metalloids, aren't they? So aren't, so metalloids are in semi, is that semiconductors you're looking up or superconductors? Semiconductors, okay. What's a semiconductor? It's, it, for instance, in solar power, active solar power, when a photon, Isaac, um, Albert Einstein won the Nobel Prize for the photoelectric effect. A photon hits a, a semiconductor and e, an electron is ejected. So you get this flow, right? Those semiconductors are metalloids. Yes? Do you want the definition of it? No, what you could look up, you could look up. See, I wanted you to come up with the fact that they're metalloids without me telling you. Um, look up metalloids and semiconductors. Metalloids and superconductors. Anybody else have anything? Kaylee, do you have something? No? Okay, that's all right. That's all right. They're hard at work here. Everybody has their computer on their desk. The elite of the world. This is an international class. We have a lot of Arab folk here. We have an entire Arab row. The first row is Arab, as it should be. Excellent. I like that. We have a couple of Arabs here. We have first three are yeah, Arabs. Yeah. Antoine, where, where are you? Are you like? Uh, I'm European Arab. You're European Arab. Excellent. And Kaylee's South African. She's okay. And then we have Red, who looks like she's off the boat from from Dublin. Uh, and then Victoria, are you uh, Filipino? <laughs> Japanese. Am I? I'm getting myself in trouble here. A little bit. A little bit. Where are you from? Brazil. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, my homeroom student, I knew that. Brazil. Boy, am I off. Okay, like by a half a world. And then we have, then we have someone from the UK who has uh, some Irish heritage. Was that? And Yemen. So she's, she's got some Middle East there too in the second row. And then we have um, Gabby from um, Tasmania. What she said? Oh, oh, can I, can I, oh, Canada. <laughs> Canada. And then we have, uh, who else do we have there? And where are you from? Yes. Yeah. America. We have an American. We have Will from Fatland. Where, where are you from, Will? Oregon. Well, that's like a weird, that's like a country to itself. Okay. The environmental state of the country. Excellent. We love Oregon. They keep us honest. They are, Oregon is the, is the environmental conscious conscience of America? Then we have then we have a couple of Arabs there, Osama and uh, Iran. Who's from Iran? Fishman. Fishman. Okay, no, you're and and Osama. Where are you from? Pakistan. Pakistan. And then we have. Where are you from? The Sweden. New Zealand. Oh, you're New Zealand. Oh, I always you know New Zealand. Plus, the place I really want to go out from the states. 
Georgia. Where? Georgia. Georgia. Excellent. And where are you from? Belgium. Belgium. We have a Belgian. I was in Belgium this summer. All right. So, do we have any answers? Let's 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 bring this to a close. We still have work to do on our our labs. Yes. Anybody? Elemental analysis of superconductors or semiconductors. Yes. Mr. Salmon. Uh, oh, I thought it was a different question, but it says they're both called semiconductors. Metalloids and. Metalloids are called semiconductors. Is that what you just said? I like that. Excellent. Miss Brazil, you have anything to add? I apologize. I will work hard to earn your trust again. Okay, my apologies. Yes, Jad. Uh, it says here metalloids form bonds uh, which are easily broken by heat. Wait a second, hold it. Metalloids form bonds. Chemical Listen, bonds. guys. Miss Brazil, Miss New Zealand, are you listening? This is important. They easily form bonds that are easily broken by heat. Heat particles, heat, or heat particles. Heat. Um, or two max. Or what? Two max. That's what it says here. Two max. I think it's two max in a bond. Is that it? Two max in a bond. Is that it? Could I see that? And could you just hand that to me? Excuse me. I'm going to go off line. All right. What, what, what do you got? What does it say? Where's the word? With it. And what's two max? Oh, uh, I think uh, amount of oh. heat particles. Oh, all right. I have no idea what that means. Okay, I have no idea what that means. Two max, I have no idea. What else? So their metalloids are semiconductors, etc. Okay, anything else? Anyone else? What about superconductors? They're the same. Do we have any elemental now? Like what other elements are in those things? Anybody? I feel like a dentist. I feel like I'm pulling teeth here. You guys gonna help me out here? Mr. Will, are you on the cell phone? I was looking up the your computer died? Yeah. Excellent. Prepared. I'm glad you prepared. Electrically prepared. Okay, excellent. That's a that's a wonderful reason to use a cell phone. Excellent. Well done. Anything else? Anyone else? No, is that it? Okay, shall we quit? Well, the point is this. That that metalloids are used in semiconductors. That's a big use for them. Uh, when I was when I was in school, when I was in high school, you never heard really of metalloids being used for anything. Um, but since then, with the explosion, the explosion of the microprocessor, the explosion of the semiconductor. When I was in college, after college, I worked for a company, uh, an, an analytical company, and we would fix problems with products from companies that would, they'd contract us out to do that. So we would have to do elemental analyses on whatever product it was, from records to oil to um, semiconductors. We did a lot of work for a company called National Semiconductor. And um, I learned a lot about semiconductors that year. Okay. And then you had the invention of superconductors. If you put a super, if you make a superconductor very cold, like you put it in liquid nitrogen kind of cold, it'll kind of like suspend, it's a little float. Do you ever see that? It's very cool, oh, yeah. very cool. And we're going to see that when we do, you know, the, the last part of the chapter, I'm going to tell you about a, a, a site that I have that I want you to become very familiar with. It has, it has short videos on multiple short videos on each element of the periodic table. And the way I have it set up is I produce a periodic table, and then in the periodic table, either the symbol, the, the atomic number, or the mass number, and or the mass number, I have it linked to a video from that website. It's really cool. Yes, Professor? That's the way the magnet hovers over a superconductor because magnetic fields cannot penetrate the superconductor, known as the Meissner effect. The Meissner effect, excellent. We'll talk about more about that later as well, okay? So let's quit. This is it. This is our conclusion. Let's work on the ionization lab. Go.